Alright, so it is the morning after the 20th anniversary event. I went to sleep right before it started. So, um, I'm gonna go on cave 13. Let's see, let's... <gasps> we... <laughs> okay, hold on. So, <laughs> nominating rocks as plushies. Oh my god, case 13 interview to Haley Joel Osment. Okay, hold on. <laughs> Oh, no peril, cool. The world's made of love and darkness. So I died to the heart t-shirt. <laughs> what do you mean they can't now skip the words for? I'm hyperventilating. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my fucking god. And Kingdom Hearts missing link. I'm terrified. Oh my god. <laughs> Alright, so Kingdom Hearts 4, and like, holy shit. So, um, in the little bit I did recover, um, I basically, y'all see here, I'm, at, I'm like fucking hyperventilating when I saw that KH4 was announced. I was like, no fucking way. It was, yeah. So, um, this I'm really excited about. Um, obviously, this is the the, the 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 it's Kingdom Hearts four, like four, like how how do you process that it's four? It feels like we just got three. <laughs> so, I I have so many thoughts about KH four already. So, um, yeah, let's get into this one. So it starts off with just saying the Lost Master Arc, which is the new the new name for our post nor games um part of this this overarching arc now i find it really fascinating already that it says lost master arc and not masters so this is referring to a singular master and the two people that i can think of are sora or the master of masters it could be some, someone else, but I find the singular tense extremely fascinating considering every other time we've heard the phrase Lost Masters, it's been plural. So, then it cuts to the interior of a building in daylight, uh, potentially the apartment building Sora is staying at. Um, there are multiple pillars in the building with what look to be maybe advertisements. Um, these are written in the Scala language. Uh, the Scala language right now is there's no actual like translation available um none of the letters here seem to really correspond to anything at, at the very least not well from our understanding of it right now um there are more signs of billboards that can be seen outside some of them are from are around they look to appear the same uh signs that were seen around the 104 buildings that we saw during the azora battle and king Wright's remind so here we get another narration the voice is different from uh uh, missing link but apparently it's the same person um, and it's uh, the line is uh, if this isn't the ending you desired if it brings you despair then leave this world for another your options are endless um, now this sounds uh, this sounds more like young Xehanort uh, just based off of again just me listening to the voices um, it sounds more like young Xehanort than the missing link trailer but again I think it might be Lushu in a different body it's definitely not Zigbar's voice actor um so at the very least that's what I'm able to tell um so we then start seeing these dark particles appear from one spot like from from this window shot in the middle of the city um they're not they don't appear to be gathering to the spot they're coming from a spot um and more tendrils can can be seen like faintly being drawn towards this particular point um like it's drawing darkness from the very air itself to make the ball this ball bigger um which is kind of interesting considering it it seems to be a point of darkness that appears and then it starts drawing in more that being said i actually personally think this is a portal so and the reason why i think that is that um later we see 
what appears to be stars inside of the portal. It's hard to tell. I cannot tell if this is just the reflections of certain particles within the dark orb, um, and they are just appearing as white. Uh, but they don't appear to be moving, unlike all the particles around the orb later on. Um, so it almost looks like it's a night sky with inside the portal. And that can mean quite a number of things. I'll get back to that. But the thing is, is that this also... Uh, it's hard to tell. Again, I don't know if it's just the way that the light is being reflected off of these, uh, these dark tendrils, as I'm referring to them now. And... Uh, who knows, but it, it almost looks like we're seeing, like, white tendrils, like, as if there's cracks appearing in the center of this portal. Um, maybe, like, again, I think this might be a portal because it's almost kind of, like, cracking a- like, Sora's already torn a hole in the fabric of time. I don't think, uh, a- a, uh, granted, we haven't seen the tear, but like a a mirror cracking type portal appearing in a completely separate reality is not out of the realm of Kingdom Hearts. Um, so from there we get more narration. Oh uh, no, I'm sorry, this is not narration. This is a uh, some text appearing on the screen. The heart resides within the soul, which in turn is guided by fate to its rightful place. Now, um, I did take a look at the fonts because. My first thought was that this font looks basically the same as the font that we've seen in Final Fantasy Versus 13 slash Final Fantasy 15's trailers. And yes, it is the same font. It's not the same font that we've seen in previous Kingdom Hearts 3 trailers. I double checked. Um, it's the same font as the Final Fantasy Versus 13 slash 15. That being said, this font is just italicized Times New Roman. So it's just you know, it's it's just a very common font. That being said, given the influences of Versus 13 we have seen already, I wouldn't be surprised if this is intentional, especially considering this, this line here appears with music that is very similar sounding to Somnus from Final Fantasy 15 slash Versus 13's uh, uh, playing in the background. It's so there's plenty, there's plenty of uh, comparisons that have already been displayed, uh, uh, shown off out there. But it does sound very similar to Somnus. And at the end of Kingdom Hearts 3, its secret ending, we did have the music, the very end of, of it, start off with a very similar motif to Somnus. So again, there are parallels being drawn here. Um, now what's really interesting is that both of this line, the, the heart resides within the soul, which is guided by, which is in turn is guided by fate to its rightful place. Um, it is very similar to the beginning of Cage 3, where Sora says they can take your world, they can take your heart, cut you loose from all you know, but if it's your fate, then every step forward will always be a step closer to home. So there's this kind of like, fate will guide you type thing, which I, 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 it's kind of interesting. Um, I know that destiny and fate has always been kind of like there in Kingdom Hearts, but I feel like Sora is somebody who constantly defies fate, or at the very least, fate's expectations. So it's kind of interesting to see how fate will play a role. Uh, especially, especially since Sword just defeated an old man who wanted to dictate everyone's fate, which is fucking hilarious. Considering I just again I just rewatched Dark Road and Young Xehanort's like, you can't dictate the fates of other people. It's like, bitch, you're literally gonna do that in seventy five years. Anyway, um, but that whole line's like, they can take your world, they can take your heart. I believe there's an interview about interview where Nomura did say that this is kind of a reflection of Sora's feelings at the end of the game. So it's interesting to have this line sound very similar to the line at the beginning of Cage 3. Now, what's also interesting is that we actually haven't really heard mention of the soul as an aspect of somebody since the secret Anson reports of Kingdom Hearts 2. So it's possible that the next focus, uh, the focus of this next arc, arc will be on souls, which is, again, really interesting. 
um, the only previous mention of souls have been like uh, a natural death occurs when the soul leaves the body. Um, which then we see actual death in Cage 3. <laughs> um, so, yeah, it's interesting to see where that's all gonna go. Uh, one other thing I forgot to mention in the previous uh, narration. Uh, if this is, isn't the ending you desired, if it brings you to despair, then leave this world for another. Your options are endless. It's very similar to a through line. It was also a, a line that appeared in Cage 3's like, early tra earlier trailers. Is that, uh, Don't assume your dreams are just fantasy. If you can imagine a world, believe in it and dive in. Which is, I think is interesting to have that parallel because this is also something kind of the Master of Masters is trying to do. He's like, he's gone to he's looked into the future and seen a world that he can't conceive so it's kind of interesting like the the options i guess the the idea of options and and fate uh colliding i guess um that whole free will versus fate thing so from here we cut to a realistic uh looking forest with a waterfall and a stream again the song the sounding music in the background i will concede there is some sort of metal object in the in the background I'm gonna be rude here. I don't think it's Star Wars. Please go touch grass. <laughs> People, please go touch grass. Not every forest is Endor. Um, like, I'm serious. Like, I, I, I'm... If you really want Star Wars and Kingdom Hearts, more power to you. But I'm sorry, seeing a metal object in a forest, no matter how much it looks like a fucking robot from Star Wars, I... Guys, guys... We're really not going to do this this early. Please don't let us do this this early. Uh, anyway. Um, then we see some mushrooms and rocks. I hope they're not poisonous. Um, so then it cuts to Sora's chess piece. Um, which is in what appears to be the normal Kingdom Shader graphics that we've seen in Cage 3. Um, his piece, Sora's piece, is noticeably alone. There are no other pieces around. And... It's in the center of the board, and the last time we saw Sora's piece in the center of the board is with Xehanort's piece knocked over in defeat. So this is a new scene. It's not pulled from Cage 3, this this chess uh, scene here. And then we have the line, the choice is yours once more. Um, again, really interesting to have this... Um, we're presented a choice, even though there's an indication of fate. Um, and again, like, Sora says at the very beginning of KS3, every step forward will always be closer to home. So, again, like, the whole destiny is never left to chance. We have all these choices. The thing is, is that, um, like, there isn't a whole lot of choice choice is emphasized in gameplay in Kingdom Hearts. It hasn't been emphasized too much in narrative besides like, oh, choosing to uh, walk the path of dawn, the road to dawn for Riku or something, right? Um, the only other time that we've had like big major choices to make are the questions that we get at the beginning of KH1, uh, uh, the beginning of KH3, and the ending of Dream Drop Distance. Um, that that being said, these were all gameplay-specific choices, right? So I'm not sure how, like, choice is emphasized here. Again, very interesting. I'm not entirely sure what to make of it. So we then have the camera pan inside, and we see Sora asleep on the couch. A uh, doorbell rings, and Sora wakes up. Now, that being said, I did not think this was Sora at first. I absolutely thought it was Yazora. Um, so my crack theory is that, and this is so hard for me to explain, I think my theory is that Yazora is essentially the Sora of unreality. He is, but, and I realize that Yazora doesn't actually look like Riku in real life. So that's like, I'm like, my first thought was like, this is, this is unreality Sora. This is Yazora here because he didn't, it's realistic graphics. It didn't look like Sora. And I'm like, what the fuck? It's, it, it was, it was a lot to process. Um, now, um, this had to be explained, and I, and I understand, like, some of the confusion, because a lot of people were thinking that the, the series was gonna go to straight realistic graphics. No, this is, I, I don't believe this 
the, it's been confirmed that Sora looks this way because he's in Quadratum. And later we see Donald and Goofy in like the normal cartoony Disney style. So like this is just an evolution of the Kingdom Shader. This is how it's being utilized for this world in the same way that we had the realistic graphics looking for Pirates of the Caribbean. That being said, it took me a second, but I, I, this look has really grown on me. These graphics have really grown on me, except for one area. Sora's face does look a little funky, but I'll get to that. Um, so the the apartment that Sora is sleeping in, it looks pretty bare. Um, he's got like a really flat couch, just like from IKEA or something. Um, there's like really nothing that we've seen in the apartment. Um, so um, we. Again, back to Sora, his his jacket has similar sleeves to his pirate outfit, which I think is is really cool. And then like he has bare feet, it's like oh no, his feet they look weird. <laughs> his feet look weird. <laughs> I'm so not used to see like put on some shoes, put on some shoes, <laughs> hide the shoes. Um. Uh. Yeah, I mean the graphics they they actually look really good. I. Again, it's really grown on me. Like, I kind of want this whole outfit that Sora's got going on here. Um, and then, of course, his hair. His hair is a lot flatter. Um, it looks like his birth by sleep haircut. Some people have theorized that's because Ven is no longer in his heart, and therefore his spikes are calming down, which is so funny. I, <laughs> uh, but the thing is, is that this whole haircut, he kind of looks like Hope from Final Fantasy XIII. Um, or kind of like has from Neo The World Ends With You. Um, so, yeah, again, like, it, it, and it's weird because of this haircut and because of his outfit and later gameplay sections. Honestly, if he didn't tell me this was a Kingdom Hearts game, I thought it was going to be like some sort of other Final Fantasy 15 game because he kind of looks like Noctis running around, which maybe that's the whole point. Um, who knows? But. Um, I will also die on the hill that Sora is a natural dirty blonde, um, because, d like, he's, he's dirty blonde in the Pirates shader, he, like, almost every of the CGI's, his hair is a lighter blonde, I will die on this hill, I will die on this hill, and Quadratum Sora shows me dirty blonde hair Sora, I will die on this hill as a, f as a dirty blonde myself, so, I will die on this hill. I don't care what the Ultimania says. I don't care if it's Roxas' influence. Sora's blonde, damn it. Um, what I think is kind of cool here is that, um, so when Sora gets up, we can actually see, like, how Sora's hand affects the fabrics of the couch. Tiny little details. Um, we cut to a first-person view, which is always interesting when Kingdom Hearts, like, cuts to a first-person view. Um, so we see Sora open up the door for Strelitzia. I can't believe it's Strelitzia. I, she's in 3D. She's, oh my God. I, oh, oh. I just, oh. She just looks so good. I'm sorry. She just looks so good. I love her. I've missed her. Um. Now the thing is, is that Strelitzia looks surprised to have the door open. Um, or either it's surprised to see Sora awake. Um, so that's interesting. Um, so like, like Sora, Strelitzia has a different outfit from her Union Cross attire. She doesn't have the ribbons uh, in her hair, she doesn't have a necklace, and she has less frills. Uh, so it's a more streamlined outfit. And it kind of looks like she has freckles, so that's kind of cute. But, um, my question then is, is that, first of all... <laughs> If this is Strelitzia, where Strelitzia lives, she's fucking rich. Because apparently this is in, like, the, the, like, apparently Sora's in, like, one of the most expensive areas in Tokyo to live in. It's like, damn, Strelitzia, you're fucking hella rich. Um, but also, like, uh, is this just how Sora's clothes are manifesting in Quadratum? Like, do they magically transform? Or did somebody dress him? Like, so that case, like, Strelitzia, oh no. Strelitzia had to dress Sora, and that's not something I want to think about. That's weird. Um, anyway, so Strelitzia then, uh, talks to Sora, saying that you've been asleep since you arrived in this world seven days ago. Um, now, of course, seven, big number in Kingdom Hearts, but also... The Reaper's game lasts seven days. Now, I have no idea if the world ends with you in any sort of capacity, um, its rules or whatever is going to be involved in Kingdom Hearts 4, but uh, um, I, I do hope to see the return of Neo the World, or not Neo the World, if 
we do get Neo Tui characters, that'd be cool. But to see the return of Borlands with you characters, I think it'd be really cool. Although seeing Neku in like realistic graphics would look really weird. <laughs> um, so again, I just want to point out that the Reapers game is also seven days. So who knows why was Sora asleep this whole time? Um, so uh, there's been a little bit of confusion about the time frame of which this particular moment takes place. We know Sora's been asleep for seven days, but has he? Like, when does this take place? So originally, um, originally it was translated as this is a year after Melody of Memory, which means that Sora's got a year of missing time. Sora's got two years of missing time, and then wakes up in Quadratum and sleeps for a week. So that's like, holy shit, what? But I, I guess it has been confirmed by Tai Yasue that Kingdom Hearts 4 takes place directly after Melody of Memory. So... We only have a year of missing time for Sora, um, and then he wakes up in Quadratum. Now, that actually, I, I'm glad that it's been confirmed that it's only a year, because then it's like, Riku's also got a year of missing time. Like, what the fuck has Riku been doing? Like, I realize that Quadratum is supposed to be, like, a really big building, and, and Riku probably never been to a city in his life, Kingdom Hearts, is probably freaking the fuck out, and he's like, uh... <laughs> socially awkward gay boy running around looking for looking around for his lost love um so um that being said all of that it's also unclear when the fight with yazora happens um so it's very possible that maybe not long after he disappeared sora fought yazora and then ended up in quadratum and just happened, a, a, a year has passed, maybe they were fighting for a whole year, oh god. Um, um, or maybe the Yazora battle is going to be something that's brought up, like, maybe some other point within Kingdom Hearts 4, who knows. Um, but of course then there's the which ending is canon, right? Um, now, Nomura did say that it would, or Nomura or somebody, I, I don't know who's answering some of these questions <laughs> for the, uh, uh, the fan submissions, um, but it seems that the crystal ending, the, the, when you lose, was just kind of put there to see, it's like, oh, well, you're gonna lose a lot, so we might as well give you an ending, um, but regardless of whether that's, like, it's just like, oh, we just put it there type thing, um, I do think the Sora winning ending is the canon one, considering there's more to that ending, we, like, we hear, Presumably, whoever Luke somebody is in the car, uh, remarking on something being impressive. Which, again, this this whole segment of the winning, I mean, both endings show Yazora waking up in the car, similar to Noctis waking up in the Versus Thirteen trailer that had. Uh, it was the Versus Thirteen trailer that was like, "Hey, this is now Final Fantasy 15. right? And again, we have like I think it was Core in the Versus 13 slash 15 trailer saying like something is amazing right and we have uh Luxor uh Luxor um saying something similar like the fact that we actually hear Luxor's voice and um like because there's just more to that ending I think there's um I think that is the canon ending um so Strelitzia then leads Sora outside to the balcony and like I don't know if it's just like the sun being in his eyes, but Sora looks really sad <laughs> when he's looking out at the city. Like, he. Uh, you could kind of tell he's just kind of overwhelmed and he's like, I just really want to be home type thing. Um, so, yeah, he just looks overwhelmed and sad, and I just want to give him a hug and be like, it's okay, you're gonna. You're gonna be home soon. Um,. Now, what's interesting is that, like, Strelitzia is, like, smiling in the corner, or at least it looks like it is. It's just like, hey, look at this awesome city, and Sora's like, I just want to go home. <laughs> um, now, uh, Strelitzia then officially announces that Sora's in Quadratum, um, which, again, like, this whole area appears to be in the, uh, uh, Aoyama district of Tokyo, um, which Shibuya stream in the distance. Um, again, it's kind of interesting how people have doxed Sora's apartment so quickly. Um, so, um, we also see, like, the, the stoplight 
we see a stoplight with both English and Japanese uh, uh, on it, which I think is, I mean, how often, I don't know how often I've seen both Japanese and English uh, in a Kingdom Hearts game, like, together. Um, so that's kind of interesting. Um, it's also a shot that's very similar to... Uh, so then we have Strelitzia saying, like, it's a world full of life. Um, and then we see, you know, just some other stuff going on. So we see, uh, I'm gonna call him Twitter guy. Because <laughs> uh, he's on his phone, he's waiting across the street. We see a bunch of signs behind him in English, Japanese, and in the Scala at Kylum language. Uh, we see most notably D-Eater and D-Dream somehow. Maybe this is insinuating the something happening is a dream or it's just a reference. Uh, to Dream Drop Distance just for, like, advertising, like, haha, Dream Eater, um, haha, uh, Dream Drop Distance, whatever, right? It could just be a throwaway thing, or it could be intentional. Um, I'm gonna guess for something like this, it's just kind of, like, a, a reference, um, similar to, like, Breath of the Wild's, like, uh, different names being references and not particularly, like, canon, like, oh, this forest is absolutely named after the mighty Kokiri Mido. So, um, again, based off of how the NPC looks, I believe this is just a graphics style of the Kingdom Shader. It's not an entirely new graphics engine. Um, and, because they kind of look similar to, like, to the Pirates of the Caribbean characters. Um, so, um, now the Twitter guy finally notices the big giant orb in front of him. Um, and he's like, whoa, what the hell is that? And then we got another line, uh, but for you and I, it's similar to an afterworld, I suppose. Now, this is extremely interesting. So, first of all, I can't get over that. <laughs> I cannot get over that at, right after Kingdom Hearts 3, everybody's like, Sora's dead. Me included, I'm like, Sora's dead. Holy shit, oh my god, Sora's dead. And, like, so everybody's like, Sora's dead. And then Remind comes out and he's like, uh... It's like, oh no, he's alive. Um, well, I mean, the secret ending is like, now he's alive somewhere. And then, like, Remind, we see him fighting Azura. It's like, alright, so he's in the final world, I guess. But then, like, Melody Memory's like, nah, he's in a completely separate reality. I was like, okay, sure, why not? Um, but then, this line right here is, um, no. Yeah, yeah, like, this line right here is, like, he's actually dead, and the real world is hell. <laughs> like, the fucking character development from going, dead, oh, not dead, he's just in a, he's just actually in another reality, he's fine. But he might either be potentially frozen in a crystal or stuck in a time loop fighting Dylan Sprouse. Um, but now he's actually dead, and <laughs> it's just like, what the fuck? Like, ugh, time's a flat circle. Um, now, what I find also the kind of the main interesting lump here is that Strelitzia just kind of lumps herself in with Sora, meaning that she knows that she is also dead, um, and also knows that Sora is from her reality, which I find very fascinating, considering there's, like, hundreds of years between when Strelitzia died and when Sora appears in Quadratum, like, how often do people cross over into this reality? How many, how many Keyblade wielders are living in that apartment? Um, you know, it's like, it, Strelitzia doesn't look too particularly shocked, like, other than like, oh, the door's opening. Like, oh, you're a Keyblade wielder. Like, can Strelitzia summon her Keyblade? What, what's going on? Like, it's really interesting to see how Strelitzia, uh, and how Strelitzia is going to be utilized, I guess, in this game. Because, I, I just was not expecting to see her. Um, that being said, I actually don't think this is the real Strelitzia. I think this is Data Strelitzia. So, at the end of Union Cross, um, we see somebody in a black coat walking with, um, Strelitzia's ghost. <laughs> um, was the best way to describe it, but it's Strelitzia in a white coat, um, and we can tell it's her because she, it's got, like, her, her, uh, hair bangs. Now, it's, I believe Brain insinuates that it's, it's Lushu who was with her, but the thing is, is that Lushu didn't know what happened to Strelitzia. So, 
it can't be Lushu with Strelitzia, but also Strelitzia is dead. We saw her die. And so it's like, why why is she walking around? This has to be Strelitzia's data because data of Strelitzia was recorded um, because we see that recording glitch in, um, in Union Cross. So this is, I think this is Strelitzia's data and the person that was with her was the Master of Masters. Um, now, if it isn't the Master of Masters, it could be this other dude in the black coat next to the Master of Masters at the at the end of the trailer. I'll get to that. Um, but if that's the case, if it's the Master of Masters and he brought Sir Litzia's data here, um, then he needs her for something, which is really interesting. It's like, what does the Master of Masters need Sir Litzia for? Does it relate to Sora at all? Is Strelitzia being used? Is Data Strelitzia being used? Is Sora being used? Who knows? The Master of Masters in, is in play, and Strelitzia and the Master of Masters are connected somehow. That being said, I do hope this is actually the real Strelitzia, be um, and even if it isn't, and S Sora and Strelitzia are besties, I, 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 just, I just want that. They're either going to be besties or they're going to be like a sibling dynamic, and I'm here for it. It's, it's cute. Um, and also, of all the two characters to die and go to hell, the two that didn't deserve it are Sora and Strelitzia, but here they are, in hell. Like, somebody please protect my poor children. Now, it cuts to everybody gathering around this dark orb, um, indicating that this is an abnormal occurrence. Now, I'm not the first one to point this out. I know that regular Pat has uh, talked about this in his analysis, but... Uh, the fact that everybody's running away um, indicates that this is not something normal that happens. Um, now it's here that we get this um, w we get this look look at the portal getting bigger, right? And this is where I see like the white particles. I think they're stars. Um, so if they are stars, the only place with just a pitch black night sky, is the final world like that like that looks like the final world the dark version of the final world um but again this all could be particle effects because the thing is is that uh like uh, they're not the white particles don't seem to be moving they almost seem to like uh we do like see them kind of disappear a little bit but it's almost like the tendrils are covering them so i really can't tell if this is just more particles being drawn in but it looks like a portal um, that being said, if this is a portal, then it actually opens a portal for this, like, really cool dark side design that, um, he, like, he's fucking massive, he's got large wings, um, he kind of looks like Dark Inferno, other people pointed out, like, Invisible or, like, The Guardian. He also looks like Seymour from Final Fantasy X! <laughs> like, that was the first thing when I saw that haircut, I'm like, oh, that's some, that's some Seymour shit. Um, now... Um, this new dark side, who I'm calling dark side 2.0, he's like gathering a bunch of cars and debris around him. And this poor sap, he just really wanted to get to work. He just wanted to get to his job. But now his car is being eaten by darkness, um, which is, you know, rip, bro. Um, because it's unclear if he actually makes it out of the car. <laughs> like, he's trying to leave, but we don't see him falling out of the car. So fucking rip, I guess. Um, it is uh, of note that the license plate does have Scala language. Now, the debris surrounding um, Darkseid 2.0 is very reminiscent of the debris that's in the Titans battle on Olympus in KH3. So I'm assuming that this is how we're... And, and we do see like later on when Sori is like chaining his way uh, up the obstacles to face uh, Darkseid 2.0 um, that the car he jumps off the car that's like floating in there so this debris is you know kind of like how flow motion can be used and so then we cut to this guy just absolutely eating shit in the background <laughs> and twitter guy is filming and there's this lady like hey man we need to go um <laughs> and then sora comes running through and um it's it's here that i just oh man um Again, the fact that the, the citizens are running away, it's an indication that this is an abnormal occurrence. Um, now, 
again, I'm not the first person to think of this, but I do think that Darkseid's appearance is because of Sora. Now, the specifics of the detail is that Neo Darkseid, Darkseid 2.0, whatever the fuck we're gonna call him, um, he kind of looks like Dark Inferno. Now, Dark Inferno X is, or Dark Inferno Key, however it's pronounced, um, it looks identical to Dark Inferno, but it's notable that Dark Inferno X is the darkness, it's that darkness being that is hiding inside of Ven. Um, now, it's, I find it very interesting that Sora and Darkness got to talk. Now, I believe that Darkness jumped from Ven to Sora in this moment. Because Darkness knew that Sora was going to get yeeted from reality and end up where the Master of Masters is in Quadratum. And Darkness is always following the Master of Masters around. like. Like, the Master Masters, like, literally says, like, I just want to take a break. I just kind of want to avoid you guys. And Darkness is constantly following him. So I believe that Darkness knew that Sora was going to end up in Quadratum and jumped from Ven to him. And because of this, Sora has now brought Darkness into Quadratum, both capital D Darkness and just Darkness in general. And that allows Darkness to probably pull from the Darkness in the air and, and from this world to manifest dark side 2.0 this could also explain why it looks more like dark inferno um and now that could be like it manifesting or darkness opens up a portal to the night version of the final world to call in a dark side that it takes over either way i do believe that dark side appearing is because sora brought darkness to watch quadratum unknowingly um which is actually kind of sad <laughs> like I feel bad for Sora because I have a feeling that that this is going to be a plot point that's brought up and he's going to feel super bad. It's like, baby boy, it's not your fault. <laughs> it's not your fault. Um, yeah, so that's my that's my uh, my theory right there. The 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 string, the string and uh, pins. Um, so Sora starts running into battle, which I just. Yeah, there's something really emotional about Sora just running straight to battle to help people he just doesn't know, which I know is a thing, but like, he's a completely different world, he has no idea where the fuck he is, but he sees a Heartless, he gotta do something about it. So, I love my boy, with all of my heart, I love him, and god, I wish he would get some rest. So, <laughs> so we see Sora's, you know, he, what's nice is that he still has his, like, goofy-ass run, uh, despite his regular size shoes. Um, and then it cuts to a first person shot, kind of giving like this sense of scale, like how big Darkseid actually is. Um, and then we see Sora trying to summon the Keyblade, and it seems like he's actually kind of having a hard time. It's very brief, but he looks really desperate, like he's not sure if he's going to be able to use the Keyblade. Maybe he's, maybe he's tried to summon it before and it didn't work, um, who knows, like, when, how long it's been since Sora wakes up and talks to Strelitzia and then this darkness battle, who knows, right? Um, but it, it looks like Sora is having a hard time summoning the Keyblade. Um, perhaps these are part of the repercussions of misusing the power of waking. Um, I will say, like, in motion, Sora's face doesn't look quite right. I think it's because his hair, because his hair usually doesn't swoosh and move around in realistic ways, it usually just stays still. So to have it move around and stuff, his face looks a little weird. Um, now what's interesting is that when Sora does manage to summon the Keyblade, it's not the normal VFX that is used for Sora's Keyblade specifically. Um, it is very similar. It, it's, it's clear, it's transparent, which is very similar to how Aqua summoned the Master Keeper um, before unlocking Castle Oblivion. Usually Sora's VFX are just kind of this like long string of light with like little like light particles after it That being said Aqua's is also usually has like petals and stuff um, For Master Keeper, so the the clear The the transparent summoning may not mean anything, but I I, I do think it's an interesting detail Now when Sora summons the Keyblade I Darkseid 2.0 just kind of notices Sora now, um, which is interesting. 
you know, it's like, oh shit, there's Keely Wielder here, time to stomp. Um, so, and then we have this seamless cut into gameplay, which is a system that has been carried over from Kingdom Hearts 3, um, which I think is really awesome. Um, it, again, it looks really good. I'm, I'm surprised at how much this has grown on me over the course of 24 hours. <laughs> um, so, then, so, with the gameplay, we do see the HUD. Um, I believe all of this is placeholder for a number of reasons. Yes, we have the HUD with the attack, the magic, and the item, right? Um, but it doesn't, it, it does have, like, some particles and stuff, but, like, nothing is really, like, moving on there. Um, Sora's, like, health bar and magic and stuff, like, that's not really moving either. His, his icon, his, his face icon appears a little out of place with the rest of the, the cartoony aspect of the, the OG Kingdom Hearts style of, of health and magic. Um, it also uses the EX bar, which was notably seen throughout Kingdom Hearts 3's development before it was changed to the focus bar. So it's either EX, whatever that is going to be, plays a feature in this now, or this is just, this is just the old assets that we had from KH3's development that we're just going to slap on there. Um, a lot of people have noticed that the fourth, uh, command reads build at the bottom. Uh, I actually think this is a developer. <laughs> I actually think this is gonna open up a developer menu. <laughs> I, I I look at this, I, I see this, and I'm like, you know, it'd be really convenient if we just had like something on the HUD that just opens up like dev commands or something. Um, so I I personally think that build is referring referring to, hey, what's the build number? Hey, or like maybe this opens up some build tools or something. So I actually think this is a developer menu and not, uh, the actual HUD, um, so with that, that HUD stuff out of the way, also, like, it's also been noted by, like, uh, by Oroxus and, uh, regular Pat, that we don't really see any sort of, like, UI indicators for, like, the different bits of flow motion and other things that we see, this is either because, it, again, I think this is, like, because it's early in development and the, um, definitely this is real time, it's been confirmed that this is real time, this gameplay is happening in real time, but I don't think any of the HUD is, is functional. Um, so, um, in the environment around we're seeing like trees and poles getting slowly ens uh, ensnared by these dark tendrils. Um, we later see these tendrils like kind of climb up a building following Sora, so it seems like Darkside 2.0 is slowly covering the area with these dark tendrils. Uh, we see Sora go into a pole swing, um, and this also, like, he jumps off to parkour off a wall and, um, kind of leap off of a rail. Um, I believe that just given the, the smoothness of it, I think it's automatically, like, see, he's close enough to, like, uh, the wall, so it automatically lerps to this particular animation. So I do think that these, again, these are all real time. But it's just because, like, these... This this is possibly a scripted event. Um, who knows? But, um... Ugh. Oh, boy. God, there's just so much going on. Um, <laughs> um, again, I, wh what I'm thinking is that because uh, Sora is so close to particular areas of interest that it's automatically doing these flow motion uh, animations. Because, um, again, I'm not seeing any sort of button prompts anywhere. Um... So again, this, it's either that or this is possibly scripted. Um, so uh, we also we do see this like unmatching animation when Sora's like flipping around the the rail. So again, like this is you know this looks really good for like an earlier on uh, 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 looks really again this looks really good for an earlier on uh, looking build. Alright, so after Sora does his hardcore parkour, um, he writes himself and then summons a chain separate from the keychain on the keyblade itself, um, but from the same place, from the from the chain, and attaches it to a street light to do this cool like grapple effect, which appears to be this kind of like new version of like flow chain, which uh, flow chain was originally is originally in the name of it, but this uh, air step 
stuff. So this is maybe this iteration of air step. Um, now it's interesting that it's chains because uh, Aqua, Ericus, and Terra have all shown to summon chains. So perhaps this is a showcase of Sora's mastery. But like, how did Sora learn how to do this? Like, this is all part of like what happened in his missing time. How is he able to summon these chains? Um, what is a really cute detail is that like Sora ends up holding the Keyblade backhand like Ven, and I'm like, oh, it's just like the influence from Ven. It's cute. Um, so. Yeah, the the chains are definitely interesting. The the chains have a have a heart motif. Same with the the hook of the chain. This um, this is pointed out by by Alroxus as well uh, in his analysis. Um, I do love when he jumps. Like Sora's still got like the same like jump animation from Cage Three. Of course, there's going to be like similar animations. I would expect that at this point, considering there's really no reason to reinvent the wheel again. Just reuse the reuse stuff. You know. Um, so we get a jump, uh, from midair before it cuts to a new angle. Um, now, it's here that Sora's hair color doesn't really seem to stay consistent, it's probably just, like, the lighting, but, like, as he's moving around, it almost looks black, which is why, like, it's weird, it almost doesn't look like I'm looking at Sora, it looks like I'm looking at Noctis. Um, so yeah, um, this is more apparent when Sora's, like, sliding down, like, that hallway of the building, I'll get back to that. Um, but so Sora lands on a wall and studies himself with a keyblade, which I think is a nice little detail. Um, you also see like this like blue particle like around his feet and the keyblade, just this kind of like, which the blue particles around him was the indicative of the, the air step stuff. So I think that's a neat detail. And as I mentioned, the dark tendrils are following up the building and then he does a flip and then he uses what appears to be double flight to enter this section of a building that's been torn off and is in midair. And Sora is sliding down this hallway, this piece of building, and it flips and, and rotates midair. Now this looks, and I'm not the only one to, um, I am not the only one to notice this, but this, I immediately thought of a Final Fantasy XV um, trailer where they showed uh, the siege at Altitia. Um, where they're stuck in this hallway and they're like trying to navigate through. Again, a lot of verse, there is versus thirteen influences here, and to see this kind of a, um, this shot being used again is is very interesting. Um, as Sora is sliding down this building, the tendrils are getting closer again. So like Dark Side is just constantly chasing him with darkness. Um, so then we see Sora and Dark Side both get ready to use an attack. Uh, now, Sora summons uh, light and his crown symbol, um, which, again, according to Bioroxis, is similar to the magic circles that you use in Final Form. Um, so Darkseid readies a punch, and it, it, there looks to be what is potentially a reaction command, but there's no specific button prompt. And it, it seems to be perfectly timed with both Sora's attack ending and the, the punch happening. So it, it, from the animation, it kind of looks like a shot lock almost, but... I don't know. I don't know if this is a reaction command. I don't know if this is just part of Sora's attack that just happens to time up well. Um, it's very similar to me of the uh, the uh, Rock Titan battle in the very beginning of Cage 3. Now, so Sora then blocks the attack by spinning the Keyblade around in front of him, similar to uh, a move that's actually used um, against Vanitas in uh, his final battle in Birth by Sleep. Um, but the thing is, is that this block and the magic appear to build up energy, so the longer Sora is blocking, it appears that more light energy is building. Um, and then when the punch is blocked, it that transfers to surround the Keyblade, and it looks similar to the Drill Punch uh, Keyblade transformation, except that it's all light, which, again, I do, I do like that Sora is able to use abilities, specifically with the Kingdom Keys. It's just showing that he doesn't need to augment his abilities with specific keyblades he can now just has that power innate in him our little boys growing up <laughs> all ready to destroy people um so i, I will i want to make a note that even though Sora's built up energy from his own attack it's it appears that he's also drawing in some of the dark tendrils from dark side's attack um so this and it's almost like purifying it along the way. Um, so this 
basically identical animation to drill punch as final attack is used and the light drill is shot towards dark side um and dark side is not pleased um it was here that i noticed there was actually no health bar for dark side so again with the unfinished hud um or maybe we just won't know uh the health who knows um it was also here that, that one of the signs in the buildings has a zipper on it which i thought was silly um so um, Darkseid seems to go for another punch and sort of readies himself, but Darkseid just seems to kind of punch the ground. So maybe it's that whole move where he punches the ground and someone's heartless type thing. Um, and from there, we see, um, Darkseid's trying to squish Sora as Sora's running towards Darkseid, and then the camera starts to pan up a, a nearby building with more narration. Uh, however, if you do leave this world behind, don't expect to return from the one you came. And we see the Master of Masters and someone else in a black coat. So, people think this is Demix or Luxord. Um, I don't think it's Demix. The model isn't right. It doesn't have the intense shoulder pads. Um, so, but whether this is Luxord or not, that remains to be seen. I don't think it is because I don't think Luxord knows the Master of Masters. Demix definitely does. Uh, which is weird. Um, and... Uh, I have a feeling that Luxord is like a sworn enemy of the Master or something. I, I don't know. I just don't. I just don't see this being Lucio. It could be somebody else. It could be Darkness. Who fuck? Who fucking knows? Um, so they're watching the fight, um, which is interesting. Um, what what's going to happen after Sword? If he's like, is my, the Master of Masters always going to be watching from a distance, or he's going to approach Sword? Who knows? Um, and from there, we get the logo, and it is Kingdom Hearts 4. Like, actually 4. Um, apparently, there, it was... It's unclear whether they were going to work on a Verum Rex game or Kingdom Hearts 4, or this was going to be called Verum Rex or Kingdom Hearts 4. The translation's not clear on it, but at the very least, we have Kingdom Hearts 4. Here it is. Holy shit. Um, now, we do have the new font. I'm still not into the new font. I... I, I don't know, it looks a little, t it looks kind of like the, uh, the original font from, like, Kingdom Hearts' original pitch, when it was called Kingdom of Hearts, the, the most cursed, cursed name, cursed name, um, so yeah, um, then it cuts to Donald and Goofy, um, uh, walking in a dark area with the, this kind of reddish-brown floor, uh, light is coming from Donald's staff, and both are in their, uh, this cartoony Kingdom Shader graphics, which, again, serves, is like, hey, this is not, um, this, the reason why Sora looks this way is because he's in Quadratum. This is not how the rest of the game's gonna look. Um, that being said, no more, I'm begging you, please give Donald and Goofy new outfits. It's been 20 years. <laughs> give them new outfits. They deserve it. Um, now, Donald and Goofy are wandering around, and it's like, Don's like, I wonder where he is. He is unknown. Goofy's like, I don't know, but I sure hope he can help us. And behind Donald, a blue flame appears. Um, Donald notices it and realizes who it is. It's Hades. Um, and tries to stand still and not get notices, which is like, Donald, you're holding up a, a staff that just has light. It, like, you're, you're, you're visible, bro. Um, Hades chimes in, is like, hey, where do you think you're going? And, like, Donald and Goofy are like, oh, we're standing still, you can't see us. And then, um... I wrote Doland <laughs> instead of Donald. Oh no, that's what I get for writing things at way too late at night. Um, Donald and Goofy, they get scared because Hades is just hella pissed. Um, so, uh, yeah, that is all from the trailer. Um, there are some details from Cage 13. Um, we're not going to get any new details until like way after E3. The, the footage in the trailer is rendered in real time. Um, they're going to be moving to Unreal Engine 5, which I don't think is going to affect any sort of development, unlike, uh, when KH3 moved from Luminous to Unreal 4. Um, A New World is currently in development. I personally think that is Olympus, uh, given that we just saw Hades. Um, it's probably the Underworld section of Olympus, and maybe even a little bit more, who knows? Um, so yeah, um, some final th thoughts regarding... Cage 4. Um, what I think is really interesting that's getting brought up is that there was a lot of people, including me, after we finished Kingdom Hearts 3, 3 we were like, fuck, what's gonna happen now? Sora's dead. And, um, 
there was a lot of people making fan art about Kyrie specifically, um, and just other characters exploring worlds that have afterlives. Um, Underworlds, Davy Jones lockers, uh, who knows, right? Um, and that a core part of the next Kingdom Hearts game was going to be characters exploring these Disney worlds with confirmed afterlives to try to find Sora. And that appears what's happening here with Donald and Goofy, because I believe that they're in the underworld. And I find that so fascinating that that actually could potentially be what's happening here, because this opens up quite a few worlds for Kingdom Hearts 4. Um, we've got Olympus, um, Coco, um, uh, some people have mentioned Moana, I could definitely see that, Soul, of course, um, Pirates of the Caribbean, again, like, which I'm actually really excited about because I love the Pirates of the Caribbean world, and, uh, like, any excuse to, like, oh man, wouldn't it be cool if we could just go back and forth between the locker and the real world, ah! anyway, um, any excuse to, to have more Pirates of the Caribbean, I'm fine with that. Um, so, um, it's unclear who Donald and Goofy are looking for, because I don't think they're looking for Hades, because they were trying to hide from him. Um, so, um, <laughs> now, the thing is, is that, so Hades is pissed that Donald and Goofy are there, um, so, I, I, it, okay, so I have this list of, like, what I want for, like, the Kyrie game, right? Um, and, uh, the reason why I'm bringing this up is because I believe that, besides from playing a Sora and Quadratum, I do genuinely believe that Kyrie and a few other, uh, main characters, like, you know, again, potentially Aqua, Riku, and Roxas, considering they're all playable and Remind, those are going to be play main playable characters exploring various Disney worlds. Um, it's not, I don't think it's just going to be Kyrie, Donald, and Goofy. I think it's going to be Kyrie and like some other Guardian of Light joining her. Like we could have like a Kyrie, Roxas, Axel trio, um, or Kyrie, Roxas, Axel, Shion, um, Kyrie, Aqua, and Ben, and Terra. You know, like we or you know, like Roxas hanging out with Isa and Terra. You know, who knows? The possibilities are, are <laughs> your options are endless. Um, so I. I I do think we're going to be getting, like, different, like, different, different the Guardians of Light, like, actually, like, interacting in it, and I do think that Kyrie is going to be a crucial part of that, um, because I do believe she is set up to be a main focal point of Kingdom Hearts in, in the future, in this, in this new Lost Master arc. Um, now, um, the really interesting thing is, is that I still need to make my video about Kyrie character development. But part of that, and this is just like my own, I guess, wish fulfillment, I wrote a list of like the worlds that I want to see in, in, in the Kyrie game. And the funny thing is, is that, so I think that Donald and Goofy are going to get kidnapped by Hades, which is maybe me projecting because I wrote... I wrote the whole scenario for Olympus, and the scenario for Olympus was that Hercules... So, so Kyrie's going to, to Olympus to, to participate in the games um, with Donald and Yuffie. And uh, Kyrie's just kind of frustrated because she just doesn't feel like she's making any sort of progress. And in the midst of this, Hercules gets kidnapped by Hades, used as ransom for Sora, because Hades and Maleficent are working together. And it's just like, fuck, we just want to get rid of, rid of Sora, and Hades wants revenge for, you know, the, the plan being ruined. And... Um, that's, that's the way that I thought this world was going to go, and Kyrie was going to save Hercules. But if Donald and Goofy get kidnapped instead, and Kyrie goes to save them, that still essentially accomplishes the same thing, and my guy, guys, I'm a prophet. Um, I'm a prophet. I have the gift of prophecy. Um, but, yeah, for, like, other potential worlds, especially, like, ones with, like, afterlives, or, like, connections to it, like, we could definitely have the princess and the frog world, um... I, I could see um, Moana appearing, uh, especially like if she's like a new princess of heart, because that's like an also like another plot point. Like we don't know who the final three princesses are. Um, 
I see San Francisco returning, like, there's this whole thing, so it's, it's really interesting, <laughs> it's really interesting, and I, and I will leave, like, the last time I edited this was March 27th, so, like, like, guys, I, I, I fucking, I fucking saw this, I saw this coming, Donald and Goofy are getting kidnapped by Hades, Ransom for Sora, Kyrie's gonna save them instead, it's gonna be great, I love it. So, yeah, that's all the thoughts I have about this 20th anniversary, um, trailer. Like, I jam-packed eight minutes and, like, way too long for me to talk about. I spent so long, I looked through so many things, like, oh my god, I'm so excited for the future of the series, um, and, oh man, I'm- god, I just want to come out so quickly, I just wanted to- I just wanted to be here, man. I want to figure out what happens. I want to play as Kyrie. Give me Kyrie game. Give me, give me, give me Sora's clothes. I like his clothes. Anyway, um, if you stuck with me this long, thank you for watching. Um, and yeah, um, I, yeah, y'all, it's Cage Four. It's real. It's like, what the fuck is happening? <laughs>